Welcome to ALPB Roundup. I am Ryan, and this is your five-minute Gastonia Honey Hunter season preview. Things started well for the inaugural season here. If you were following along, Gastonia Honey Hunters came out of the gate hot, looking like they had a great ballpark. They had the whole plan. They're doing the whole... If you haven't seen the ballpark plans, go check them out, because they're... Oh, chef's kiss, baby. It looks so good. You got Brandon Bellamy, by the way, who's rocking the best outfits every time. Shoes matching the jerseys. Team colors on point. Everything's been looking good for the Honey Hunters off the bat. Brought in Goose Gazzo, who was a good pick. He's got some Atlantic League experience, not a ton, but, I mean, he he was one of those guys who, like, worked in New Britain, who I think, I mean, a lot of people work in New Britain, but uh, he came in. He uh, has some managerial experience, so got off to a good start. Stadium looked great. Even signed Jake Buchanan right off the bat to get things rolling. And <laughs> we just haven't heard anything from him. Uh, I mean, we're getting ghosted by the Honey Hunters, it feels like. I mean, all we have heard since is that uh, Jake Buchanan isn't here anymore. That's essentially what we have heard since March with the Honey Hunters. And I don't mean to be negative. When I started scheduling this out, like the Honey Hunters are going to be the first team that we talk about, it was because I wanted to be excited. I wanted to talk about the new team on the block. Yeah, Lexington, West Virginia are new, but like Gastonia is a new new. Oh, it's stressful. <laughs> I'm sweating about this thing. So if you have not been following along recently, well, if you haven't checked in since about mid-March, you haven't missed much. I think mid-March is the last thing I've seen for roster signings, first of all. Now, that could mean a few things. I mean, Lancaster seems to sign people all the time, and I've been mentioning it. They're just like, oh, by the way, this guy's here, like three weeks later, where you learn like through the American Association or Frontier League that, oh, a trade happened, Lancaster has a guy now. So... I mean, not being public about moves is one thing, but, like, the moves aren't even showing up on the Atlantic League site if there are moves for Gastonia. So, as far as I know, there haven't been really anything in the way of moves since mid-March. And there's been, like, six prospect dugout guys signed, which I'm not going to say anything bad about the prospect dugout guys because I love what they do, but, like, six prospect dugout guys is not a roster. As far as I'm concerned, I think they have a half dozen position players, maybe, and a dozen pitchers none of which, again, are Jake Buchanan. It's a struggle right now, and it's definitely concerning. If you're a fan of the league, if you're a fan of this team, what are we doing? There's even been a shift in like their social media. Their social media presence was very good to start. Uh, it was very interactive, very fun, very sort of... They took cool angles on things. It, it was very lively. Um, it wasn't like blowing anything out of the water, weren't making headlines, but it was good, and it got the name out there, especially for a new team, and they've even kind of been quiet. So... I got questions about what's going on behind the scenes in Gastonia. Now, I'm going to be there on the 27th, next Thursday, and we're going to find out if they have a team. I don't know. It might be a third base. I'll get the shoulder loosened up. Sorry, I can come out of the pen, too. Regular Shohei Itani over here. Don't worry about it. But I'm worried about who is on the field and what exa exactly is going on internally with this team. If you check their social media now, they I swear, it's like a look at this kitchen we're hiring. We making food. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but they're. I don't know if they're. Maybe just so much is trying to get this team off the ground that they're losing track of having a team. But it's worrisome. I'll tell you that. Plenty of answers needed before opening day, which, as I said, is next Thursday. They do have players to watch. Again, there's players to watch. Hey, most teams, this is going to be the bulk of what we talk about. But I'll just breeze over it. You got John Olzak. Olzak is how I remember pronouncing it from when he was in the minors. I'm going to go Olzak until I'm told not to. And Hunter Cervenka. Those are the two names that stick out from that sort of crop of pitchers they have. Both readies out of the pen. They're expected to have um, low to mid three ERAs. Uh, Cervenka is a former major leaguer. Olzak was in AAA in 2019. Uh, Cervenka, as I recall, I've seen him before. He pitches, he, he throws fine, I think, fastball, slider, curveball guy. Uh, low, Probably low 90s at this point he's throwing. I know in 2016 he was throwing about 93 when he was in the league in majors. Um, Olzak, uh, don't know a ton about him. I know he got hit around a bit in AAA. The BABIP wasn't good, but it didn't seem to be one of those things. Bad ball in play, if it's high, sometimes it indicates bad luck. It seemed to indicate they were just hitting him hard. Um... That's not a great sign for a guy coming to the Atlantic League, but the projections still like him. Boog Powell is going to be the main name that you hear about. Uh, Orioles guy is not that Boog Powell. It's the other one. Uh, Boog Powell, young Boog Powell, still not related. Um, he's the big name for Gastonia. He's had some success at the major league level in like less than 60 games. Eh, 
I forget. I feel like it was 60-ish games. Had some success at the major league level, level, and he currently projects as the only Gastonia position player to post an above 100 OPS plus. That means above league average. The only guy. So there's some things to stress about. As I said, there are a whole lot of question marks going into the 2021 season for Gastonia, and they have until next Thursday night to find those answers. I expect a quick follow-up on this team. We'll be going team by team here. Right? We're doing Southern Maryland tomorrow. Um, as they finalize the roster or publicize the roster, I don't know what the situation is. They're not even posting saying, like, hey, the boys are back in town. Spring training has started. Let's go. When we know things, you'll know things. We'll update projections. You'll see when we show projections. If Gastonia has moved, hey, hey, they must be in business. Hopefully it's the right direction. Um, but time is about up here. So it's time to put this team on our win probability board. We'll be updating this every season preview episode. Uh, so one team going up there now, and we'll get some context on it tomorrow. Our projections give Gastonia an optimistic 54 wins in 2021. This is certainly assuming that they find some quality above average ball players somewhere, or at least league average ball players somewhere. That may shift quite a bit in the next week as we add additional teams to the board and rosters get finalized, as we said. Low end projections are brutal. Low end projections, that means, I mean, if they are signing guys that are uh, basically bench players for any other team, which that's a real possibility at this point, and they just can't fill out anyone on this roster, and heck, if they lose Boog Powell because he comes out hot, that's a possibility too. Like, if he's hitting well early in the year, you might not see much Boog Powell in this league. So our low end projections have them at 39 and 81. One of the thousand projections we even did gave them a, I think it was a 24 and 96 season. So, like, we get a range. That's how bad it can be. 39-81 was like 10% of the time, so it's well within range at this point in time. And their high end was 62-58. and 58. Things to worry about in Gastonia. We'll get a little more positive tomorrow. Uh, we'll be talking about Southern Maryland. We'll be talking about whether or not this is the year that they finally put it all together. We, Southern Maryland has got that look. Is this their year? Is this their year? Well, we'll take a little bit of a deep dive into the 2021, see who's coming back, see who's new in the Blue Crabs dugout, and we'll... Uh, continue on our way hopping over to the north division so very exciting follow us on twitter at aopb roundup follow us on instagram at aopb underscore roundup check us out at aopb roundup.com we'll be posting the videos we'll be posting daily updates as the season starts and until then i'll see you soon for more season previews